Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,356. Ah, 356. I like those old Porsches. Every morning I get up, I'm looking to do something better than I did the day before. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. When you want proven performance, there's one brand that's been around since 1938. That's Edelbrock, building the finest American-made performance products for the street and track. Edelbrock's products are designed and dyno-proven to deliver maximum results. Edelbrock has thousands of made-in-the-USA performance products for all makes and models. From their new AVS2 carburetor and innovative ProFlow 4 EFI for your muscle car or truck. To superchargers for your daily driver and more, visit edelbrock.com to check out the latest products for your ride and when you're ready to check out enter cars yeah in the coupon code and get 10 percent off your order that's edelbrock automotive performance since 1938 hello automotive enthusiasts i'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest calling in from tampa florida rick ivester rick are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride i'm ready man let's hunker down <laughs> all right Rick Ivester is the founder and owner of The Vault, Tampa Bay, located in Tampa, Florida. The Vault is respected and recognized for their fine preservation and storage solutions. It's the ideal place for their clients to store exotic and classic automobiles. Rick also offers brokerage services for cars, limited and rare race collectibles, automobilia, and Petrolina-related items that are for sale. His entrepreneurial nature started at the early age of six when he sold his pencil drawing pictures of early Ford model roadsters to fellow classmates for their lunch money. In addition to the vault, trucking has been Rick's primary business for the last 42 years, working for three large corporations as an independent salesperson for the last 12 years. Rick is on the board of directors of the Gasparilla Concours, an annual event that takes place in April. He has been instrumental in gathering business owners and fellow philanthropists to donate goods and services for their annual charity event. Through those efforts, they have donated over $20,000 to the Shriners Hospital for Children. Magnificent. A shout out to Joanne Pistorius and her husband, Brando, who introduced me to Rick. They are the founders of the Gasparilla Concar, and both are past guests here on Cars Yeah. So Rick, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment and share a little bit more? about your career and a very obvious passion you have for taking care of old automobiles. Well, I'm not really sure where the passion came from. Uh, somehow or another, it reared its head back when I was six years old. Today, I, I'm able to really uh, share my passion with others of similar passion. So many of us today want those cars that we've always wished for and hoped for, and maybe today we can afford those cars, but our one challenge is where am I going to keep it? Where am I going to put it? How do I protect it, preserve it? And uh, I had to solve that own problem for myself. And many times it happens when we solve our own problems, we actually uh, help solve the same problem for others as well. So that's kind of my focus today, having fun, giving you a chance to own that special car. And now you have a place to preserve it, keep it safe and secure. Love it. I love this story. Well, as we continue on your journey, I always like to start with a success quote or a mantra, something that's important to you that kind of aligns with your success. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah. So, Rick, take the wheel. Well, I tell you, every morning I get up, I'm looking to do something better than I did the day before. I've kind of had this little bit of a motto that uh, I uh, every day uh, I'm in the relentless pursuit to, to change processes, continuously making improvements. And that's what I strive for every day. I love that. You know, uh, it's kind of that practice of Kaizen, constant and never-ending improvement, the Japanese philosophy of life, trying to do something a little better and kind of aligns with a great saying that I've had from a past guest, and that is, if you want something different in your life, do something different. Don't just keep doing the same thing and hope things will change. I think they call that the definition of insanity. Some smart guy said that somewhere in the past. I think his name was Einstein or something, but... uh at any rate, I love that philosophy, that idea. If every one of us could wake up that morning and kind of think, how can I do something a little better today? Even if it's caring for yourself or caring for someone else or just being extra specially nice to somebody, maybe the barista across the counter or something like that. 
uh, it sure can make a big difference in everybody's life. Well, let's go back in time. I want you to share a story that instigated that passion for cars. You alluded to this in your intro there, but is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were indeed a car guy? And I think that entrepreneurial moment came when you started selling those drawings as a six-year-old. That's hilarious. Uh, You know, it is kind of funny. I I have to tell you that it did get me in a little bit of trouble with my dad. He thought I should be paying more attention in school. I just couldn't get my mind off of, uh, you know, drawing these little cars. When you have someone interested in something that you're passionate about, even at six years old, I mean, how do you do anything else? You know, that's just the way it began. At 13, I bought my first car. Obviously, I couldn't drive it, so it sat in the barn for three years. Funny thing is, you know, I had got my license at 16, and I lost them six months later. Even more funny, it wasn't like I was going fast or reckless. Back behind the football field after practice, there was a little bit of a slant in the uh, parking lot. We'd throw out a bunch of soap suds, and we'd all line up and smoke (laughs) our tires. But the funny part of it is, really, we never went faster than probably two miles an hour. Yeah. But back in 19— We made a lot of smoke and noise. (laughs) We we did. And, and, you know, same today as back in 76, uh, they considered that reckless driving. And being from a small town— you know, I got away with it four times, and the fifth time, the uh, the cop finally called my dad and said he needed to have a talk with me, and you know, got my license suspended for six months, and it was a great, Uh-oh. it was it was a good story, and it really taught me something, you know, about responsibility. That was kind of a funny part. Just as a quick note, I kept that car for I guess about a year ago, and I finally oh, really? had to let it. I finally had to let it go. It set oh, my, my gosh. dad. It's at my dad's garage at the house I grew up in for, I guess, 35 years. It was a 1973 Pontiac Granville Triple Black 455 400. 35,000 miles, I think, was what I had left on it. The hard part was nobody wanted the car. They just wanted the motor and the training, and I just couldn't break it up. So, yeah. but, uh, wow. <laughs> anyway. Amazing. You had yeah. that, that long. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So so today is just really, I'm, I'm able and I'm blessed to be able to enjoy my passion. And that's really what I'm focused on right now. And, you know, transportation is still a core part of my business, the trucking side of it. But I just can't get enough of, uh, of, uh, of anything relative to cars, anything associated yeah. with cars. Very cool. Love it. Well, let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge or a big failure. And I ask this question more so not to drum up maybe a difficult part of your past, but really to talk about the lessons learned from these situations that kind of put us back on our heels a little bit. They end up being wonderful lessons and lessons you hopefully learn from and carry forward. So tell us about one of yours and tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your career and your business. Well, I think uh, I think one. I just had to go back to that uh, that uh, Pontiac. That was a good lesson for me. My wife recently had colon cancer. That was kind of an awakening for for you know anyone who hasn't had that kind of serious illness. But it uh, if it does anything for you, it should help you appreciate every day when you get up and you want to start that day off and do something better than your day before. There's only one guarantee in life. So let's don't let's don't cash that one in. Let's uh yeah. let's find ways to make our days productive and enjoy our passion and enjoy our family. Yeah, you know, for sure. And as we age, you and I are uh we'll call ourselves middle aged. Let's do that. Okay. It's nice of you. <laughs> I, Thank I, you. Yeah, I feel I feel a lot younger than I am and sometimes I look at my my uh, driver's license and I go, ah, I don't think that's me. I don't think the year is right to date of birth, but but, uh, you know, it's right. And as we get older, we start to lose people around us and uh, people get ill. And especially for me being out on social media, it's not a week or sometimes a day goes by where somebody doesn't lose somebody and you have to kind of sit back and, you know, call a family member and talk to them a little bit, spend some time with them, spend some time with your friends and uh, get your head up out of your desk and uh, uh, remember that this precious life we have is so important. So, uh, wow. Well, I'm sorry you went through. Is your wife OK today? Everything is really good. You know, everything was taken care of. Just, you know, all I can tell my friends out there is uh, make sure you visit the doctor on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely important to catch those things early because they uh, they can be corrected if you catch them early. So that's fantastic. I love yes, that sir. news. 
Well, let's have a little bit of fun and talk about your first really special car. Now, we may have already done this because you talked about that car, but maybe there's another first special car. And I emphasize the word special because sometimes our first cars are special, but there's something else that comes along in our life that we worked really hard for. Is there one of those in your your life story? You know, there kind of is. Being, uh, I'm, I'm a picker from from way back. I truly enjoy the thrill of the hunt. And when I'm, uh, I'm just a tad bit OCD. So once I get focused, on something, and I, I might become a little obsessed with it. I only have one mission, and that is to to go after it and uh, try to secure it. And this came about probably about ten years ago, as I uh, as I wanted to reach out to uh, to find that one or two cars that were very special to me. The first one was a uh, an 04 Challenge Stradale. I don't know why. I can't tell you why. That, but there was just something about that car, the line. The, uh, you know, the why was the car created? What's the purpose of the car? Just a number of things. But once I locked in on it, it was, okay, now I'm on a mission. It took me about two years to, to find the car that I actually wanted and that, that fit the criteria that I was looking for. Came up on an internet on a Sunday night. I jumped on an airplane Monday morning. I flew and got the car that day. That's, wow. that, that's how quickly it, it happened when I found the one that I wanted. Yeah. And then my next one was uh, a good friend of mine was uh, selling his uh, Marchetta 550. And the price at the time was just crazy good. I thought, man, this is really, you know, I appreciate it. And so I asked him, I said, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to get when you sell the Marchetta? He goes, well, there's a GT2 out there that nobody can find that I really want. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, really? That's that's kind of like on my, on my top list too. Oh gosh! So <laughs> fortunate or unfortunate, unfortunate for him, I did not buy the Barchetta. Fortunate for me, I went on the hunt for this '08 GT2. All I knew that it has been sitting in a garage for several years and just had a few miles on it. it took me about six months. I found the lady. It was uh, again another funny story. Her her boyfriend bought two of them from the same dealership. They drove his and parked hers. <laughs> I uh, I ended up coming up with you know my two favorite cars I guess and they still are today, the uh, the 08 Stradale and the the 04 Stradale and the 08 GT2. I don't think I can ever let them go, or somebody's gonna have to twist my arms and my legs and and probably hand me a little bit of money. Yeah, so the the, the 04 Ferrari is a, a 360 model, right? It is, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I have a a good friend here in the Northwest, Bill, who. He bought one of those new a while back, and uh, well, it was a while back, oh four. It seems like yesterday, but I remember when he brought it by my office that evening and let me take it for a drive. And I'm basically a race car for the street. I mean, those things stripped out, and everything sounds good inside of them. But the GT2, I'm a big Porsche fan. I got to drive down or fly down to Sacramento and drive one back for somebody once. And um, oh man, that was a fun drive home. That's for sure. Uh, it was great. I love those cars. So you got two nice, nice rides in that stable of yours in the vault. It, it is. I'm really thankful. And you know, just a quick note on you know how did the what, what, how did the vault come about? My cars are sitting in my garage. Yeah, I've got air conditioning, but that that doesn't really solve the problem of preserving a, a fine classic or exotic car. You got to control humidity. And there was another car that I really wanted. And it was the uh, little 246 Dano. And at the time, I could have purchased one for, for about 50 grand, probably had close to 50,000 miles on it. But the, but the problem was there was no place to put it. There was no place to store it. And uh, I think that's what really said, you know what? I'm going to solve this problem for not only myself, but everyone else. And so today in the vault, I have a picture of that 246 Dano hanging on the wall that reminds me just why why did I do what I did with the vault one to make sure I never have that problem again and I hope that uh, my customers and my friends will never have that problem again as well yeah I remember when the 246 Dinos yeah you could pick one up for 40 50,000 yeah all day long very nice cars they are way north of that now well yeah I'm going to talk about have you talk about the vault more in depth here in a moment but before I do that the seller's remorse story we always have, the car that got away. Now, in case, I think you may have already answered that with the Dino. I know you didn't end up purchasing it, but it's that car that kind of got away in a sense, right? 
You know, it really did, and uh, I regret that. I, uh, I'm, I'm, always, I'm very conservative in my approach to that type of, uh, of an investment, and I just knew it was gonna, it was gonna, you know, increase in value. And while no one else wanted one, I, you know, I'm always the, the one that's uh, maybe a little bit different. It is the one that got away, and, and many times I wish I'd have kept the, uh, the Granville as well. But you know, you have to make you some can't of those hard keep decisions. Them all. Yeah, you, it's hard you to can. keep them all. You can, and I could. I have seventy two hundred square foot. I got thirty eight cars in the vault. I could, but it just it just didn't seem right. It was time to let it go. But I still look at that Dino every day when I'm in the vault. Yep, I understand. I have a special place in my heart for those cars as well. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the vault. Let our listeners know more about this business of yours, how it all works, and uh, why this is so great for your customers as a place to keep their vehicles. Well, about Eight years ago, nine years ago, there was nothing like it in the state of Florida. I had already spent uh, two years previously traveling the country and visiting uh, places that are similar to uh, a car storage, if you will. I just knew I had to solve my own problem, and I uh, felt like I could solve it for everyone else. So storage and preservation for your high-end, your exotic, your classic was my was, was a priority. And it's, I, the vault opened up uh, June of uh, 2012, and really got, uh, really has uh, has done well, I guess. Over the last seven years, I've been full for the most part. Six of those seven years. Once that's kind of in place, then you know that's. And I don't advertise. I, I have to. That's, that's so important. It's been very important to me. Is as I I know that it, uh, advertising is. And again, this is a hobby. It's a passion. I always said that I'd probably get a hundred phone calls and maybe only a car or two out of that. It wasn't, it just, I couldn't afford that kind of time. So it's all based on referral. You're either, you know, re- referred to me by the dealership or some other passion car person, or you find me on the internet. To take the vault to the next level, in my mind, what I wanted to do, I've been, again, collecting all kinds of automobilia, petro, die cast, uh, rare prints. I bet that's just, what I've been doing. I can't explain it. But about a year ago, I decided, you know what? I, I got no room. I've got to, you know, one of those things where you got to start letting things go. So about a year ago, I started uh, selling the collectibles and buying and selling. And, and now I've really taken that that buy-sell process for the collectibles and the, the petroleum and the automobile. I do vintage gas pumps. I ship them all over the country. It's just become a big part of, of my passion. So now when I'm out traveling or I'm out trying to do a little picking, I kind of kind of have a place to put it, and I kind of know what my target market will be. And, uh, and that's been a lot of fun. Thanks to the friends in the, in the racing world that have been a big part of this for me as well. So many great teams out there that, you know, that know the vault and have shared some of their, their great, uh, they're great items with me. I don't know if that helps you. Did I did I give you enough there to? Of course, of, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let me ask you this: with your, with the uh, the people that store their cars there, uh, is do they each all have access, or is it open at certain times? Or if I wanted to take a midnight run in my car, is that something I could come and do? You know, it it it. I don't really have closed hours or open hours. This is my hobby, and it's a passion, so it's not defined necessarily by certain parameters that we normally associate a business with. My focus is to to take your passion to the next level. What I don't do is I do not open the vault anytime during dark hours. I do not allow anyone in the vault without me there with them. There is no exception. And even though I have in the agreement that I took from some other agreements around the country, it does stipulate a 48-hour appointment, I've never used it. Maybe the closest time I have, if I'm down at the vault all morning, let's say for today, and you want to come pick your car up this afternoon, and I've already come back to my other office, I'll say, you know, I'll 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 be there in the morning. I won't go back to the vault that same day. But for the most part, you know, I can jump in the car and head that way and take care of you and just, you know, moments notice. And that's just part of my passion. Uh, you know, when you're strictly referral. It's, uh, like you know, that's how it will. And that's how you're measured too, is, uh, when I bring someone into the vault, just to even come visit the vault, I have this little, little thing. I say, now, when you leave here, I only ask one thing of you, 
I want you to go tell at least 10 people about your visit to the vault. And that's kind of, that's kind of the way it works. Yeah, works great. Sounds great. Now, do you have a website where people can go and learn more? I do, www.thevaulttampabay.com. I encourage you to go to the uh, customer testimonial page. I've been blessed with some good customers that wanted to, uh, to leave some of their feedback. Great. I'll make sure I put a link to that on Rick's show notes page on the Cars yeah! website. So, Rick, up next is the last lap. Before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars yeah! sponsors that make this show possible. Do you know the best way to protect your vehicle, both the exterior and the interior, is with a car cover? I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. That's right, 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft has been manufacturing premium quality exterior and interior covers for over 50 years with a stellar reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit over 80,000 patterns and growing. They are the only cover I'll put on my vehicles. You can choose from a wide variety of fabrics, styles, colors, and more. From full cover designs for factory to custom-made vehicles, plus convertible top covers, trucks, truck cab coolers, motorcycles, scooters, ATVs, trailers, campers, personal watercraft, and a wide variety of custom features. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, Thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah! podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah! website at carsyeah.com. Hey, Mark Green here from Cars Yeah! Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah! TV show? It's a weekly visit to some of my past Cars Yeah! podcast guests and I take you along for the ride. You go behind the garage door and into their lives, their businesses, and you get to see what makes them successful. With tens of millions of viewers, Cars Yeah! TV is making its mark. Cars Yeah! TV is available on MAV TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV. You'll find MAV TV on Direct TV. Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through Lucas Oil Racing Television online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. All right, Rick, we are back, and I have a bit of an introspective question for you. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car parked in the vault, what kind of car would Rick be and why? What, what kind of car would Rick be? Uh, yeah. You know, Rick's probably one of those that uh, I'm not a real... I'm not a driver necessarily of new cars. I like, I like, uh, I'm a, I'm a kind of a traditional guy. I like, uh, some of the older lines and cars, uh, some of the vintage cars. I was telling someone the other day, I, I have three cars in my garage, two Range Rovers and a Jeep, and they all have 120 to 130,000 miles on them. 09, 010, and an 012. I'm just, you know, I like I like these kind of cars, just like the Stradale and the uh, and the GT2. I I look for things that are a little bit unique and not what you see every day. So, if you were actually a car, which of those would you be? You know, if I had my uh, my choice today, I might come back as a uh, maybe as a, uh, a Ferrari Daytona. Okay, I, I kind of <laughs> like that, or or maybe that shot at getting you know being that little Dino that I always wanted to be. But it's yeah. just, it's more of something that's a little bit different and mm-hmm. something that you don't see every day. That's kind of what more intrigues me than anything else. There you go. Well, we are entering the last lap, and I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick blips of the Dino throttle. So here we go. Well, what's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Buy low and sell high. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. But sometimes it works out that way, which is cool. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? Well, I'm, I am a little bit OCD, and I, I, I say that in a, in a real uh, fun way. It does uh, give me the, the, the DNA I need to get up every day and, and, and strive every day what I'm trying to do with 
both transportation, trucking, both in the car, the passionate side of the car. You know, that's I think that's what drives me every day. Um, there's nothing I can do about it either. It's uh, <laughs> no, nope, it, it's just it part is, of you. It is. It's it's a it's a relentless part of my personality, and uh, I work with it. And uh, in most cases, it's done me well. There you go. So, Rick, do you have any resources that you'd like to share with our listeners that you think they should be aware of? Well, I'd certainly like to talk about the Gasparilla Concourse d'Elegance. And uh, this is uh, an exciting time for all of us who have uh, sort of developed and created what we think is uh, is an exciting uh, opportunity for us to raise money for the children at the Shriners Hospital at the University of South Florida. It's a, it's a really... Uh, it, it went very well in our inaugural event. That is uh, something very, very exciting that's going on in the Tampa Bay area as well as in my life. Absolutely. Now, you're, you've been uh, instrumental in helping them quite a bit because when I had Joanna and her husband Brando on the show, she talked about, and we all know this with Concord events, you can't do these events without a lot of help from a lot of people. And this is all unpaid help. These are people that step forward like you, Rick that help raise money, in this case, for Shriners Hospital for Children. Tell our listeners a little bit about if they go to the Gasparilla Concours, what they might see there. Uh, absolutely. And let me just first start off by, uh, you know, to participate or be a part of, volunteer for an event like this. Uh, a couple of things. One, you have to have a passion for cars. And then even more important than cars, you have to have a passion for children. And that's what we all bring together uh, on the team. Cars, I call it cars and kids, and it just doesn't get any better. Uh, so just just a little quick quick recap on 2019. Yep. It was very successful beyond our expectation. As you mentioned, yes, we gave the children uh, actually $22,000 to help them with their wheelchairs. Nice. And uh, it is a three-day event. I'll talk just a little bit about that in just a moment, but it is a three-day event. It uh, It is an all-encompassing event. Uh, it is kind of an entertainment where uh, you can come spend two or three days with us and have a great time and help us with our children. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool that it's spread out over time. But uh, talk to me a little bit more about the wheelchairs that you guys raise money for, because I know that wheelchairs can be quite expensive, right? They are. In 2019, our primary focus, uh, really our only focus for the children was to help them raise money, raise money for their wheelchairs. I didn't believe it until I saw it, until I was in the hospital there in the area where they put these wheelchairs together. But the lowest cost wheelchair, the cheapest wheelchair you can get, it starts at $2,500. Whoa. And this has nothing on it. It has, uh, it has wheels and seats and a frame. Yeah. Wow. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much basic. It is, it is high tech, but it doesn't have a lot of thrills and frills on it that, uh, you might think for $2,500. Now, if you really want to move up into, what I might call the the Ferrari of wheelchairs, if you will, the the really the ones that have all the bells and the whistles that are individualized for each of the children's needs. It can go up to fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Oh for my a gosh, that's incredible! Wow, I had no idea. It it really is, and you can't comprehend the cost until you understand the science behind it. Mm -hmm. You don't even think about it. It's just it is what it is. Let's do everything we can to raise some money for these children and buy as many wheelchairs as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, going into 2020, we're going to focus on prosthetics. Nice. Very and, cool. And so, it, it again, it continues to evolve around cars and kids. And uh, until you spend a little time in one of these hospitals where children are only there because those of us who are willing to, to donate and share our time and our money, uh, give money to these children. That's the only way they get these services. And it doesn't cost them a dime. Yeah. They're right there nice. because of all of us who make some type of contribution toward their, their, uh, you know, betterment, if you will. And their needs. Well, that's very kind of you. That's and their needs. awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful things they're doing through Gasparilla Concord for Shriners Children. Thank you so much. Now, if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that individual be? Carol Shelby. Yeah. And, and I, be you know, it? yeah. And my, my passion for, for Carol is just what he was able to create and innovate. Step outside yeah. the box and create his own uh, legacy. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been fortunate. It, it really is. And I, 
have been fortunate to get some of his items, you know, the die cast cars and things like that, that, that he signed. And, uh, I just think he's a good role model. When you put role model and cars together and you have one and the same, it, it doesn't get any better. Now there, there are many other ones out there, but recognizable, you know, Carol is, uh, is, was one amazing individual. You know, it's interesting since I've started asking that question. Number one answer is Henry Ford. Number two, Carol Shelby. So, uh, yeah, I don't doubt that I'm hearing that. How about a book? Is there a book you'd like to share with our listeners you've enjoyed reading? Uh, you know, not anything in particular, I guess. I, uh, I spend so much time reading a computer screen that I don't have a whole lot of time for, <laughs> for books. If I need something yeah. on a reference side, then I, uh, I switch my OCD gear and, uh, and go in that direction. But I honestly just, unfortunately, don't have the time to relax and read books like I wish I could. Yeah. Well, one thing I might recommend to you that I've found works for me because of my busy schedule is audiobooks. And here's a, a great little secret. You can uh, go to your local library, connect with them for free. They will let you download books right into your mobile device. My wife listens to books every single day on her Kindle, uh, all for free. So libraries are an incredible resource that I think are overlooked by a lot of people. And you can get movies there, books. There's all sorts of different things at your local library. Uh, so for one of those things, like if you like to clean your cars or go for a walk or exercise, uh, obviously podcasts like Cars You Have podcasts are a great thing to listen to, but books are also great too. And I've been listening to more and more books when I go for walks. So, uh, oh, well, thank there's you. your, thank you. Yeah. There's your tip of the day. And they're all free, which is really cool through your library. Of course, your taxes pay for that, but you get so much more back than the little bit that the libraries get. So, uh, check that out, everybody. I'll remind everybody that these links are available on Rick's show notes page. Just go to carsyad.com, type in Rick Ivester, I V E S T E R, and that page will pop right up. All right, Rick, here's the last question I have for you, and it can be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you a cool collector car, but there's a little trick to this thing, actually, three tricks to this thing that might make it difficult for you especially considering you already have some dream cars in your garage. So maybe you already have the answer to this, but we'll see. You can't sell this car to buy a bunch of other cars with. You have to drive it. No garage queens allowed here. But here's the kicker. You can only have one collector car in that vault of yours. What's it going to be? And it's got to be a driver, huh? Yeah, I don't I don't want a car to sit and collect dust. That's not, cars aren't good for that. You know, probably uh, I'm sitting here looking at the two on my, uh, on my desk. Probably going to be that 550 Barchetta or that Super America. I, uh, something about those two cars, I've always had a passion for them as well. Well, I can't buy you two because if I buy you two, I'm going to have to go back and buy 1,355 <laughs> people another car. Okay. And I, you right. know, I'm running out of money here, so you're going to have Let's to pick back. between one of those two. Let's go back to the Barchetta. Okay, we'll pick that one there. What color would you like that car in? Oh, uh, it's got to be red. It's got to have tan. Oh, so red. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. No problem. Well, I'll get on that right away for you. Awesome. Well, Rick, you've taken me on a great ride today. This has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed your stories, and I want to thank you for sharing your automotive journey and the vault with my listeners. Is there a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance you might offer us before you rip off into the sunset in that 550 Barquetta? I would just like to encourage everyone to please go to the website, check out my Instagram page or Facebook. And if you're ever in the Tampa area, I would wish that uh, you give me a call and allow me the uh, the opportunity to show you the vault, have you visit the vault, and then go back to what I said earlier. I think you'll go tell 10 people. So that's kind of my wish go. every day. Cars. There you go. I love to have the cars, <laughs> and I'm always looking for cars. I stay pretty full. I just want folks to come in and visit and go share what they what they saw. All right, Rick. Well, what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and your company? Well, the best way is I'd like you just to come and visit the vault. (laughs) How do I get you in to come and visit the vault? And and my my methodology is that when you leave there, I believe you'll go tell 10 people. But beyond that personal uh, in-person visit, uh, certainly please, if you would, go to the website, thevaulttampabay.com. And especially if you would, go to the testimonial page where customers have, uh, have been very generous with their time and their feedback on their service at the vault. Probably one of the most important pages on the website. That's hopefully where I earn your business. On another part, 
of, uh, of what's going on in my life right now. The Gasparilla Concourse de Elegance, which occurs next April the 17th through 19th, 2020. You can go to the website at Gasparilla Concourse. That is plural. GasparillaConcourse.com. And I do want to mention that we are a 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization working directly in concert with the Shriners Hospital for Children at USF. That's the University of South Florida here in Tampa. Nice. Very, very nice. You also have an Instagram page, correct? I do for the vault. Yes, I do. I have the vault Instagram that uh, I really enjoy uh, enjoy uh, viewing it, looking at what others are doing and sharing some of my things on there with the vault. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it again, as I've mentioned before, it is a hobby. It is a passion. I, I give it as much time as I can and just feel very blessed to be a part of it all, especially the Gasparilla Concourse. Very, very cool. That Instagram page is at the vault TB. So make sure you visit that. I'll put links to everything that Rick has shared on his Cars Yeah show notes page. So you can go there and find all these great resources. And again, be sure to add the Gasparilla Concord to your calendar. It takes place next year, April 17th, 18th, 19th. That's 2020. To learn more, go to GasparillaConcord.org. Rick, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your many wonderful experiences with our listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.